Welcome to video two. In this video, we're going to look at the slope in polar form. So I'm going to give you a minute, and you may need to pause the video, to write this equation down. This is dy dx. Now dy dx, just like in parametric dy dx was dy dt over dx dt, in slope, in polar form, dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. And you get this very long, cumbersome um, formula that I'm going to prove it to you. Because if you're anything like me, I've told you before, I don't like to memorize formulas. So if you don't like to memorize formulas, if you understand the concept, you can derive this, this formula at any time. OK? If you need a minute to write this down, go ahead and pause the video. All right, so how do I prove this? Well, we know that dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. What do we know? We know that x is equal to r cosine theta. And that's why I said at the beginning this is important. Similarly, y is equal to r sine theta. So my formula is dy d theta over dx d theta. Well, what is dy d theta? So dy d theta, and I'm going to take the derivative with respect to theta, and I am going to have to use product rule, OK? So dy d theta would be if I were to take the derivative of r, I get r prime, and I keep sine theta the same. Plus, now I keep r the same and take the derivative of sine theta, which gives me cosine theta. dx d theta. Again, I'm going to use product rule. So I take the derivative of r, which gives me r prime, and I let cosine theta remain the same. Plus, now I let r stay the same, and I take the derivative of cosine theta, which gives me negative sine theta. And if you notice, this is exactly what we got for the dy dx. So you have a choice. You can memorize this formula if you like. Or you could derive it each time. Both are fine. And I think you, if you do either of those on the AP exam, you would be OK. All right, let's apply this. We want to find the slope of 3 cosine theta plus 6, six sine theta when theta is equal to 0. So our first thing to do is to find our, what we need. So let's start by finding r prime. So r prime. It's just the derivative of this with respect to theta. So this would be negative 3 sine theta plus 6 cosine theta. OK? Um, we also need to evaluate r prime of theta at 0. So evaluating that at 0, of course, the sine of, um, of 0 is 0. So I get 6 times the cosine of 0, which is cosine of 0 is 1. So that's 6 r of 0 is equal to, again, I'm replacing theta with 0. So that'll be 3 times 1 plus 6 times 0. So that just gives me 3. And of course, cosine theta, maybe I should have started with that one. Cosine of 0 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. So now I'm just going to put that in my handy dandy formula. So I have r prime sine theta plus r cosine theta over r prime cosine theta minus r sine theta. So I'm just going to evaluate these with the information that I have here. So r prime is 6 times 0 plus r is um, 3. r at 0 is 3, and cosine of 0 is 1. r prime at 0 is 6. Cosine at 0 is 1. And that's minus um, r of 0 is 3, and sine of 0 is 0. So that 0 goes away, that goes away. So I'm left with 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So the slope when theta equals 0 is 1 half. Now let's write an equation of a tangent line. This is a polar coordinate. This is r and this is 0. 
or is it? Yes, this is R and this is zero because when I put in um, zero for theta, I get zero and I get two, mon two times one is two. So this is an R value and this is a zero value, I mean a theta value. So it's R theta because it's polar. <clears throat> now recall to write the equation of the line, I need Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. So I need to find out M, I need Y, and I need X, okay? So let's start by finding M, which is the derivative. So the derivative, dy dx, when r is equal to um, 2 and theta is equal to 0. So once again, I go back to my handy-dandy formula for dy dx. And I can um, just put in the values that I know. So I know, do I know R prime? Um, I don't know R prime, so let's find R prime. I'm going to come over here and find R prime. R prime, well, R can be written as 2 minus 2 sine theta by just distributing. So therefore, R prime is equal to negative 2 cosine theta. And so therefore, R prime at 0 is negative 2. Okay? So I have um, negative 2 times sine theta, which is 0, plus r, which is um, r of 0, which is 2, times cosine of 0, which is 1. r prime is negative 2 times 1. And then, again, because sine is 0, that's just going to give me plus 0. So that'll be um, 2 times 0. Okay? And so once again, I get that my, um, my slope is negative 1. The slope is negative 1 when I simplify that. Okay? So I have my m. I need x and y. So I have to recall. That's why I said we use this one more than anything else. X is equal to R cosine theta. So when theta is 0, R is 2, so X is equal to 2 times cosine of 0 is 1, so X is equal to 2, and Y is equal to R sine theta. So when um, theta is 0, R is 2, but sine is 0, so Y is equal to 0. I have a lot of stuff here, but we're just going to put it all together here. So my equation is y minus 0 is equal to negative 1 x minus, uh, what did we get for x, 2. And that's our answer. Our last example is to find points of horizontal and vertical tangency. And this is probably the most difficult thing that we're going to do. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to have to use, um, when we're not given a point. We're trying to find theta at this point. So we're going to have to find dy dx. So dy dx, now recall also in this case, r prime, I'm going to have to use product rule and, quote, and um, uh, product rule and chain rule here. So I'm going to keep sine theta the same. I take the derivative of cosine squared theta and I get 2 cosine theta sine theta plus I keep cosine squared theta the same and I take the derivative of sine theta, I get cosine theta. Okay, so cleaning that up a little bit, I get R prime is equal to 2 um, sine squared theta cosine theta plus cosine cubed of theta. That's beautiful, isn't it? So dy dx, we're going to have to use this information to find dy dx. So it's r prime. So r prime is that beautiful thing that we just wrote. Um, so it is 2 sine squared theta cosine theta plus cosine cubed theta times sine theta. 
plus R, which is sine theta, cosine squared theta, times cosine theta. Now, I'm just using the formula that we found for slope earlier. That's all I'm doing. And it's R prime, so I have 2 sine squared theta, cosine theta, plus cosine cubed theta, times cosine theta, plus R, which is sine theta, cosine squared theta, times sine theta. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, to find a horizontal tangent, it is, happens when the numerator is zero. So I have to take this beautiful thing I have here and set it equal to zero. I'm going to try to do some simplification along the way. Okay, so I'm finding the horizontal tangent by setting the numerator equal to zero. So this is 2 sine cubed cosine theta, sine cubed theta, plus cosine cubed theta, sine theta, plus distributing this, I get sine theta, cosine cubed theta. And all of this is equal to zero. Can I combine like terms of anything? Well, I have cosine cubed sine theta and cosine cubed sine theta. Oh, that's pretty. I can combine those together. So now I have 2 sine cubed theta cosine theta plus 2 cosine cubed theta sine theta equals 0. All righty. Can I factor anything out? Yes, I can. I have a 2 in both of them. I have sine in both of them. And I have cosine in both of them. And that leaves just sine squared. And that leaves cosine squared. Oh, this is getting pretty now. Because what is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? Well, that's just 1. Yay! So now all we have to deal with is that 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to 0. And that's going to happen when either sine is 0 or cosine is 0. Where is sine 0? Sine is 0 at um, 0 and uh, pi. And cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, but we can't, we don't know necessarily if that is a vertical tangent yet because it you can't be both a vertical tangent and a horizontal tangent. So we have to figure out what the vertical tangents are. So now I have to take this beautiful thing at the bottom and set it equal to zero as well. We having fun yet? So vertical tangent, I'm going to just kind of separate this because I've kind of got a mess here. And I'm going to see if I can't simplify this as well. So that gives me um, 2 sine squared theta, cosine squared theta, plus cosine to the fourth theta, plus Um, sine squared theta, cosine squared theta. Okay, so what do I do with this? Can I combine anything? I have, oh, I can. This is sine squared theta, this is cosine squared theta. I love it when a plan comes together. So this is cosine to the fourth theta plus three sine squared theta, cosine squared theta. Okay, can I factor anything out? Well, I can factor out cosine squared theta. Uh, let's see, where's that going to take me? So if I factor out cosine squared theta, I get cosine squared theta plus 3 sine squared theta. It's too bad that 3 there, that'll give me 1. 
So I need to figure out when is cosine square theta zero. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't have a sine problem here. I do have a sine problem here. I wrote this incorrectly. This should be minus. That's going to make my life so much easier. So that makes this minus. And look at what happened. So something beautiful happened when I made that minus. Let's go back and change this because that's going to make my life easier once I know that that's a minus. So that should have been minus there uh, from the beginning from our original formula. So making that a minus, um, so now I have sine square theta, 2 sine square theta minus sine square theta. That's going to make that just 1 and not 3. So that's going to make my life easier. So I get sine square theta, cosine square theta, because um, I'm combining these, that makes 1 plus cosine to the 4 theta. Now I can factor out cosine squared theta. And that gives me sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which magically, yay, that goes to 1. So now I just have cosine squared theta is equal to 0. And which also can be written as cosine theta is equal to zero. And that happens, again, at um, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay? Now, because this is, was considered a horizontal tangent and a vertical tangent, that means it's neither. So therefore, my answer is that there are no vertical tangents and the horizontal tangents occur at 0 and pi. Now, I didn't answer the question because I asked for a point. So how do I find a point? Well, I'd have to go back, um, since these are, t are theta values, I'd have to go back and find r at that point. So r of 0 going back to this original equation, r of 0 is 0, and r of pi is 0. So that means that it occurs that, um, I'm sorry, I want an x and a y value. Sorry, I don't want, um, I already knew those r values. I need an x and a y value. So to find an x value, I have to go back to what I had before, and that is, um, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r cosine theta. Well, what we just found and I just erased is that both of those values were 0, that r is 0 for both of those, so therefore it occurs at 0, 0. Okay? All right. That is video 2, um, and please watch video 3. Thank you.